intellectual property creation and management for emerging growth technology companies. International IP rights enforcement, the case of Singapore. This presentation is brought to you by the IP attorneys and professionals at Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers through the Halsey Intellectual Property Technology and Invention Monitor website. Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers, IP professionals for entrepreneurship's new golden age. This presentation is part of the Technology and Invention Monitor website's Legal and Business Issues and Instructions resource. Intellectual Property Creation and Management for Emerging Growth Technology Companies. International IP Rights Enforcement, the case of Singapore. Let's begin the presentation. I want to show you briefly an example of a way that the government of Singapore has dealt with intellectual property rights enforcement. And perhaps we can use the example of Singapore as a prototype or as a model for international intellectual property protection. Singapore. Singapore is a country. Singapore is a city. Population is about four and a half million, the size of Houston, Texas. Singapore is positioned in the Pacific the western part of the Pacific Ocean and finds itself in the middle of Asia, in the middle of some of the most important intellectual property creating places in the world while at the same time being amidst some of the more uh, backward or less developed intellectual property countries in the world as well. I had the, the fortune uh, a couple of three weeks ago of a Singapore patent attorney uh, making his way through Austin, Texas, where my practice is, and who happened to be uh, interested in sitting down and talking about the differences between U.S. intellectual property rights and Singapore intellectual property rights. I was amazed at how similar, in some ways, the creation of intellectual property rights, particularly the, the formation of patent rights, the drafting of the patent documents, the art of, of developing, of crafting patent claims for Singapore patent are so similar. This was a patent attorney of 30 years in the practice who had grown up in the Australian patent system, who'd worked with patent attorneys around the world and how similar those systems are to the, his system, his Singapore system, in the creation and recognition of patent rights to those of Australia, of the United Kingdom, of Europe, of the United States. And then, when we, then we talked about the enforcement and how different the rights enforcement mechanisms are in the United States and the rights enforcement mechanisms are uh, to, to those of Singapore. Just, just as, as one interesting number, in the United States, the American IP Law Association every other year publishes an economic survey of intellectual property costs, salaries paid to intellectual property attorneys, size of firms, years of experience, and those types of things. Nominally, the report has been, at least for the past decade that I'm familiar with, that the cost of having a patent lawsuit go from the initial filing of a petition for patent infringement to a jury of judge determination of infringement, not all cases go there. Not all cases reach, but the cost, the nominal cost, is somewhere between one and a half to two or even two and a half million dollars for a patent infringement case. In Singapore, the costs are nominally at $100,000 to $150,000. This patent attorney, who'd have more experience as a patent attorney and than my 20 years at practice, confided or in me that clearly the adjudications, the, the determinations of infringement are just as solid in Singapore, in his mind, as are the determinations that arise by the much more expensive process in the United States. 
at the same time the cost in terms of time. You can have a patent lawsuit in the United States go from uh, the fastest dockets take it to, from six months to nine months, perhaps a year. There's some cases, the Williams satellite case, for example, that had to do with the Hughes uh, Electronics satellite uh, developed by a uh, patent owner or inventor by the name of Williams for the infringement of the satellite, uh, telecommunications satellite, was a patent litigation that lasted over 40 years and which the government was sued by the patent owner for patent infringement. That case lasted over 40 years. There are other cases that have lasted decades in patent infringement. Well, I consider that to be a problem. Uh, the adjudication in Singapore for patent matters, according to this attorney, was never more than six months. With a price tag of $100,000 to $150,000, I think it's interesting that we should perhaps take a look at the Singapore example and see if there's some things that we in the United States can learn as we see how these intellectual property rights are dealt with by the court systems and by the laws of Singapore. Let's move on. Singapore deals with intellectual property rights by criminal enforcement. It's available only under copyright and trademark uh, legislation. Patent infringement does not attract criminal liability, but patent infringement matters are part of the same court system and dealt with in a similarly efficient way. I'd like to focus in this example uh, on the combined use of the criminal statutes for trademark and copyright infringement and then show how a private individual can become part of this system. The Singapore Trademarks Act provides a maximum fine of $100,000 per charge or five years imprisonment or both for trademark infringement. Pretty serious penalties. The Copyright Act of Singapore provides for copyright infringement of $10,000 for each article or $100,000, whichever is lower, or imprisonment for a maximum of 500 years or both. The basic premise for these criminal statutes in Singapore is that intellectual property rights enforcement is both a private issue as well as being one of general public concern. The, legislature of, uh, the legislative structure of the criminal statutes in Singapore address both aspects. They allow the task of enforcement to be handled by both private sector and the state and it provides for a sharing of the cost and burden. A state police action. There's a dedicated unit within the Singapore Police Department entitled the Intellectual Property Rights Branch of the IPRB. It's an independent enforcement, provides for independent enforcement actions taken by the IPRB.